action. So, okay, welcome to the next episode of Watch, Watch at Your Own Risk. Um, these are movie reviews during quarantine due to COVID-19 with Jeremy Tan, a.k.a. Dr. Tan, and Satyan R.B. No, a.k.a. Um, we're back for episode two, and we're going to be reviewing... What are we going to be reviewing, Dr. Tan? We're going to be reviewing uh, Three Colors Blue by uh, Shistov Kislovsky, a Polish director. One of, uh, my, my, my favorite director, actually. Um, it's a very, um, uh, it's a very, uh, it's it's a part of uh, this. Three colors blue is actually a part of trilogy, the, right? It's a part of a trilogy, as you know, of the uh, loosely based on <clears throat> the French flag, which is uh, the color red, white, and blue. So and blue is the first one. Uh, yes, blue is the first one. Which uh, and and as you know, they uh, represent different things. Blue uh, represents um, liberty. Mm. Uh, white represents uh, no no no. Well, blue represents liberty. Red represents fraternity, and white represents equality. Mm-hmm. So um, three pillars it's of based, yeah. It's uh it's loosely based on the French flag, and as usual. Uh, with uh, our film reviews, <laughs> we're gonna do it in like a three. We're gonna do the three three of, part structure. Yes, structure if we if we manage to follow it, um, the first part, which is the um, story, obviously, and then the performance, and then the uh, the craft, the craft of the film. Yes. So, uh, uh, give me a second. Uh, I can um. I can go over the summary a bit. I have a <clears throat> a summary here in front of me. Yeah, sure. And also, I just want to say that um, that there are spoilers. Yes. yes. Spoiler alert. So if you guys have not watched the film yet, uh, give the film a watch. Uh, it's available on Criterion. Um, yeah, it's only available on Criterion. So I'm I, I'm not sure if it's coming to Netflix or something. Uh, but hopefully it does. Um, but it's available on the Criterion channel, um, <clears throat> uh, and yeah, this this or uh, or if you buy the 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 disc, the blue radius or whatever, or the DVD or something, yeah, just give it a watch if you can, and then come back to the review. Um, so uh, yeah, Satyan, do you want to go with the brief summary of the film? You just want to start off with the brief uh, summary of what the film is about. I think, uh, oh, you want me to start off? I, I can, I can start off. Yeah, sure. Why don't you start I, I, and then I can jump in. Yeah, also yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Um, so the film is, is about this uh, girl, uh, Julie. Her name is Julie. It's about this girl, uh, uh, woman, uh, her husband and uh, uh, the daughter just uh, died, in, died in a car crash, right? So she sort of has to cope with her life, sort of rebuild her life slowly, uh, slowly bit by bit. Um, and this, I think the whole story is basically much about this only, like how she uh, goes through a life after the loss of her daughter and her husband. Um, and we will discuss more, more of the details as we go into the review. Uh, but this is just a loose sort of uh, summary. I wouldn't even say summary, like an overview of the film. Um, and I really like how it actually starts. I'm, I don't even think it's a spoiler. Like I really like how it starts off uh, with the death of the husband and the daughter. Like mm-hmm. I don't even have to spoil the film. Like uh, if you see the film, the first what five minutes is is the death of the or the first ten minutes is the death of the husband and the and the daughter of Julie. So um, it's and that's the incident that kind of sets everything in motion, right? Yes, yes, indeed. Uh, and that is very very interesting because uh, most of most of the films, not most of the films, I mean films that we are accustomed to watch nowadays, is like uh, we don't we, usually we see the climax happen in like you know the, the 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 what end of the second act or something like that, you know, like it doesn't happen in the beginning, you know, and this is like boom, there it is, it, it there it is, it happened, 
and then we are forced to live with uh, live with her after uh, after the loss of the uh, husband and the daughter. So uh, it's a very interesting movie, uh, very well shot, uh, very well directed, very good perform, really great performances from um, from the actors, especially uh, Juliette Binoche, which is which is uh, uh, yeah, I think it's my favorite actress. I think it's my favorite actress of all time. It is my favorite actress. Um, uh, if you if you have time, if you guys have time, check out uh, check out her work, uh, Juliette Binoche. J U I L E T T E B N O C H E, a, ve- a great actress. Um, and and I think if I'm not yeah, yeah. And I think if I'm not mistaken, this film is written for her. Mm-hmm. Just written for her, uh, because uh, uh, Kislovsky is. Uh, I think I remember I heard him say in an interview is like um, if I'm uh, for the Three Colors trilogy, he written specifically. He wrote write the script specifically for the actors in mind. So uh, Juliette Binoche in blue, uh, uh, Irene Jacob in red, and uh, and um, what's her name? Ah, uh, oh, what's what's her name? Julie Delpy in uh, white. Um, so I think so, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah, yeah. What about you? What what do you have to say for the film? Like to start off. I think uh... it's been a while since I've seen the film, right? <laughs> It has been it has been a little bit of a while since I've seen the film. I think what what really struck me with with his filmmaking style is um, his attention to detail. That's something that really stands out. Um, every scene, every shot, choice. You know, it's very detailed. He uses a lot of uh, very interesting techniques, and also just from the story point of view for this film, I think you know it's. Um, this is definitely a story that we that we are only going to see come out of top notch European cinema. It's not <laughs> something. Uh, it's, uh, it's just not something we're going to see. Because, uh, like you said, we follow her right from the very beginning that she loses her husband, and we just stay and we follow her and her as she deals with the grief and also tries to, you know, uh, there's the thing that the interaction she has with the other woman who she be- makes a relationship uh, with, right? The, yes, yes, yes. Uh, the, the prostitute. Yeah, the prostitute. She a dancer or a prostitute? She's a prostitute. She's a prostitute. prostitute. Yeah. So, um, just as you know, as she develops her relationships, we just follow her. It's a very, very uh, intimate film. Yes. So, I, I, um, before I think diving into the, the story, the plot, sorry, the plot itself, I think, uh, the film has a lot. Obviously, the film is about uh, uh, the film has a lot to do with liberty, right? Mm-hmm. Um, because of the color blue and the association with liberty, and I think the liberty, the way liberty is used in its portrait in this film is very, very interesting because there is nothing to do with politics. There is uh, what from what I read from Kishov uh, that there is nothing to do with politics. Usually, liberty we're like, oh, there's all everything to do with politics. You know, freedom, liberty. You know, but in this film, everything is so personal, it's so intimate. And the liberty, I, the freedom is, I think, is her own freedom. You know, when she loses uh, her husband and the daughter, she tries to run away. She tries to, you know, she's like, I'm free. I'm free from, 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 my, uh, from everything. I'm, I'm basically free. I'm, I have the liberty to do whatever I want. Mm-hmm. You know, but can she? You know, but can, 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 is she really free? You know, is she really free? You understand what I'm saying? Because I think on the surface she is actually free because she don't have she don't she, she loses she don't have a family she don't have a husband she don't have a, a daughter and then you know the as you can see the mother is like has a has sort of like what do you call uh, Alzheimer's uh, yeah Alzheimer's so she basically has no one to so basically she's on on her own she's free to do whatever she wants. And, then, and she's not poor also, right? She's, she's pretty well-to-do. She's pretty rich. She has like a mansion and all that uh, with the husband. And her husband, not to mention, is a composer, a very famous composer, you know? So she, she's free. She has the money. She has every, She's free. But is she really free? Is she really... Is she really um, uh, can she really be free, you know? And that's what... I think that's what the film really, really explore, uh, in, uh, really, really shows... You know, um, <clears throat> in the film, 
uh, this uh, I think. Do we see some of that in uh, her? Uh, there's a there's a man like a new man introduced into the mix, right? Uh yes, the new man, which is uh oh sh I've seen the film so many times I can't even remember his name. Uh, what's the what's the uh, Oliver Oliver Oliver? Yes. Okay, Olivier, so Olivier Olivier. Yeah, so he's the Olivier is the sort of the co-worker of the husband of Julie, uh, and I think they have like sort of like uh, a connection. They sort of like love one another before, you know. I think so. Uh, but then after the uh, the I what from what I know is that Olivier loves Julie even before the the husband's death, you know, and then. I think he sort of sees this as a moment to sort of be there for her, in a sense. And um, uh, I wouldn't want to say take advantage because um, it's very complicated, you know. It's very complex, you know. And yet, it's it's you know because I don't want to say that Olivier is trying to take advantage of uh, the fact that the husband died. The fact that Julie's husband died because he really loved her. He loved her even before before the hus the death of the husband. He loved her. I mean, and this I think he sort of sees as a time to actually go and help her to to, to be there for her. You know, because she's 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 grief. She's sad, obviously. You know, um, and the best thing about the film is is uh, not the best thing about one of the the greatest. The good, the the greatest part of the film is that when we see, usually when we associate ourselves with, with grief and all that, we cry, you know, we cry, we 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 express, we are sad, we see, we the close close up of our face, you know, our tears, you know, we're crying, but Kishlovsky never does, never do that. The only time when we see she cry is in the beginning. She's in the hospital. It's a very, very beautiful close-up of the feather. You know, and she's breathing. And you see the feather. You can feel her breath. You know? And then you see the doctor. Not, you don't see the doctor. You see the doctor in the close-up of her eye. In the extreme close-up of her eye. You know? And we know that the film is all about her. It's all about her. It's all about her world. You know? And... And when the doctor says, oh, your, your husband cannot make it, she's like, what about my daughter? And he's like, sorry, she, she did not make it. No. And then she breaks down. She goes, she breaks down, and then they cut. They cut. They did, they, he did, he's not seen never even hold on her, like, mm, crying. And what she does after, she tries to kill herself. She walks in, she breaks the glass, she pops a lot of pills in her mouth, and then she tries to kill herself. But in the end, she cannot do it. She's, uh, when the nurse catches her, she spits the pills out. You know? And I think it's a very, very subtle, but very, very accurate um, portrayal of, of what she's going through. You know? And after that, who else we see cry is the, the, the maid in the house. When she goes back to her mansion, the house, and then she hears crying. She goes back and she sees that, oh, it's the maid that's crying. She, she hugs her, she said, don't cry. She said, why are you crying? And what the maid say? Because you are not crying. I think that is, that is one of the most well-written dialogues, you know, in, 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 you know, uh, in cinema, in part of cinema, you know. Um, one of the most well-written dialogues. I think it tells so much in such a simple sentence. You know, why are you not crying? No, why, why are you crying? Because you are not. You know, the maid says to Julie, because you are not, you know. And it's so powerful. So powerful. So simple, but so powerful, you know. And, and I think Kislovsky understands the human uh, emotions, human connections, the human uh, uh, sort of the inner emotions that we have, you know, what we feel, what we think. He knows that inside out, you know, very intricate, but he knows, you know, he, he doesn't show you, he doesn't show you smiling when you're happy. He doesn't show you crying when you're sad. He doesn't show you, you know, shouting when you're angry. That is on the surface, you know, uh, but he sees through 
the surface. You know, why are you crying? Or why are you sad? Why are you angry? Why are you happy? You know, and uh, I think I've been I've go I've been going on for too long. <laughs> what 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 do you think? Yeah, what do you think? No, um, I agree. I think he the the film does a really good point uh, uh, of putting us in the psychology of the woman who is grieving and her struggle. And I think that's the whole point. I I very vividly remember that shot of the doctor in the, her a reflection of her eye, which is fantastic. And then her choice to commit suicide and then ultimately not go through it, I think is, is a fantastic um, thing. So it's like, well, she's, she's decided to live. Um, so that means that she's going to have to deal with all of this. But then another angle that I, I still want to come back to um, the guy. And so they have like a bit of a love story. Um, can you tell us a little bit about how they get really, really close to actually getting together, but then that doesn't really happen, right? Uh, no, it, it happens. It happens in the end. I, I, I think um, <clears throat> the thing with Olivier and uh, Julie is that so what happened in the film is that she she's trying to complete she's trying to throw away everything mm -hmm. right she goes to a mansion the house a mansion she's trying to give the house she's trying to sell the house she's trying to sell everything she's trying to give everything and she she finds this uh, piece of uh, music that the husband wrote before his death and she tries to throw it away she don't want to do anything with it you know she wants to throw it away and the thing with Olivier is that um, he took the piece, right? He wants to complete the, the music. He wants to complete the music that uh, Julie's husband uh, composed. Um, so what happened was, I think she tries to, she's in a, in, a, in a way she's trying to run away, right? But then yet she has to face with, you know, um, faced with her past you know it keeps coming back i think um which in this case is uh, her, her husband's uh, music right so i think the i think when olivia olivia wants to complete the, the the music you know and then there's a point in close to the end when he says he calls julie and he says i'm composing the music and the writing i'm completing the music and whatever it is, I'm going to take it. I'm going to make it as myself or you take it, whatever. But we cannot, we, we, should, we should take it. We should be responsible for this because we completed it. We, we, we did it, you know. And she's like, yes, I, I, I think that's right, you know. And I think that's the point where she actually uh, accepts, you know, she actually accepts. Um, and back to your question, you're asking about Olivia and Julie. I think, again, he loves her. He loves her. I mean, he really loves her, you know. And you can see when she, he, a lot of times he doesn't talk. He knows that she's, she's grieving, but he, he doesn't like, oh, try to take advantage. No, he's quiet, you know. He goes up to her and, and she, she doesn't approach. He just goes back, you know. And, and there's this one beautiful scene when Julie actually uh, sits in her fireplace at night. She unwraps the wrapper, uh, the blue wrapper that the daughter actually uh, uh, was playing with in the beginning of the, the film. She sees the wrapper again and then she bites. She's frustrated. She chews the, uh, the candy, the blue candy. Um, and then she calls um, Olivia for sex, obviously, right? Uh, he calls and he says, do you love me? And all that. I, I think she asks something like this and he says yes or something. Then she asks him to come over and then they have sex, and then the next day she leaves. She leaves. She walks away. You know, she leaves. She mo she moves to a new place and all that. And he doesn't pursue. He doesn't pursue for for some time. And then he found her. He he finds her a few I think a few weeks or or, or so, in a coffee shop. You know? <laughs> and all he say was. Uh, I'm glad that I've seen you. Uh, so I've seen you now and I'll leave you be. And he just leaves. 
He just leaves. He doesn't like, oh, I want to be with you. I want to take care of you. No, I mean, that is very, very well written. It's very well told. You know, the story is he, basically, he really loves her, right? He loves her. I mean, and, um, and after that, uh, here and then he appears again because of the music, right? And because uh, he exposed to the media that um, Julie's husband has a, an affair with a woman, you know, that's how Julie is like, whoa, you know, um, why is, why is, you know, why is this, uh, you know, why I, I'm not, I haven't, I've not noticed about all this. And then, and then she goes to confront the, the mistress of the husband and then that's an, a whole different story again. Uh, and then to your point uh, of the love between Olivia and Julie, in the end, they, 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 she goes to his place and they make love. They make love in this like, fair, in, in like in this, this like glass, you know, and she's like pushing, you know, he's behind her and they're making, they're making love. And I think at that point, it's like, he's very passionate, you know, he's very passionate, all, but still like she's trapped, you know, she's like trapped in this, this, this aquarium, you know, like, glass and you see her through the aquarium and and then in the end it plays um a few people you know the guy that 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 found the the necklace julie's necklace the mother uh the mistress that is pregnant with the baby um and then in the end it, it ends with julie sitting down and then uh we see an eye we see an eye. We don't know whose eye is that. We see an eye, and the reflection that we see from the eye is Julie's back, bare, naked back. And then we see Julie in the end. You know, she's sitting there, she's crying. She still tears in the end. In the end of the film, she's grieving. But at the end of the film, we see tears coming down from the eyes. You know, and then, she, and then through the reflection, like in front of her, there's like a glass or, 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 or a window or something. And we see the reflection of sort of like a tree or something, a blue tree or something. And I think that is when she accepts, you know, she accepts everything and, and, and try to move and move on, you know, with her life. Um, and I think it's a very, very poetic piece. The film is very, very poetic, in, in my opinion. What do you think of the performances? The performances. So, what do you think of the performances, except for? I think Julie. Uh, except for the Julia Binoche, yeah. Julia Binoche is uh, it, it's superb. I mean, <clears throat> do you know this story about? Um, I think I told you this story before that she, you know, there's a scene where she she scrubs the, yeah. the wall with her her fist. The knuckles, her knuckles. Her rub knuckles against, with yeah. her knuckles. I give rub. She rubbed the knuckles against the wall, against like a brick wall. That she's rubbing, and then she goes. Uh, Initially, they, they made gloves for her to wear, like, like transparent gloves for her to wear to, to the, so she won't hurt herself. And then by the time, day of the shoot, it's, it, was, it wasn't ready. So Kislovsky Kish, was very, very, very mad. He was very mad. He's like, why is it not ready? We're shooting today. We need the gloves. And why is it not ready? So Juliet Binoche heard, heard this and she's like, oh, no, 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 it's fine. I, I, will, I, will, I will do it without the gloves. And that makes Kislovsky even more mad, you know, even more mad. It's like, there's no way I'm letting you hurt yourself for the movie. There's no way, you know, that's why he's very mad. But then in the end, they didn't have a choice because of time and all that. So she actually did it with a bare uh, piece, uh, with her knuckles. So she, she did that. And then, you know, she rubbed her knuckles against the wall. And then the, 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 the bleeding and all that, it was, that was painful, but it was... So that is how good, you know, Juliette uh, Binoche is, you know, um, in terms of performance. And I think the film would not work without her. <laughs> I would go on to say the film would not work without her. Uh, maybe it would, I don't know. But uh, again, what, what, is, what is the, the actor, Benoit? I think the actor that, act, uh, that acted as Olivier and then... Um, uh, Florence acted as the, the prostitute, Sandra. Uh, no, 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 no. Charlotte very act, acted as uh, Lucille, which is the prostitute. Um, it's, it's, their, their performance was pretty good. Yeah, I really liked the performance. Uh, 
the act the actress uh, Charlotte that plays uh, the prostitute she actually acted in a film by Eric Romer uh, which is called A Winter's Tale or something and she she did really well also in that in that uh, film so she's a pretty good actress um, can we show a clip from that scene that you're talking about um, which one? Uh, the one you brought up the love scene when she calls him over or in the end yeah you can you can search the ending and i think it would appear on uh on youtube it's quite famous it's a quite famous scene it's a very famous scene actually um it's not showing i think it should be i'm talking about the scene where she calls him over to her house and then he sleeps and then the next day she leaves yeah you can just search a uh, three colors blue ending and then uh they actually show uh they actually show that scene I I think it's a it's the greatest ending of all times. <laughs> oh man, yeah. You could you could search three colors blue ending and I think you'll play play that. And the thing is, I think it was an entirely French cast for the film. Uh, yes, it's an entirely French uh, French cast for the film. Um yes, 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 it's the French is a French cast for the film. And Emmanuel Riva also acted as Julie's mother, not to mention. Uh great actress also. Hiroshima, Hiroshima Mon Amor. I think it's one of the famous films. And of course Amor. <laughs> Emmanuel and all the Amors. <laughs> yeah. Uh, can you find can you find it? Can you find the clip? No? Yeah, let's I'm gonna play. It's this one no. I'll send it. I'll send it to the group chat if that's it. Uh, and also while we're waiting, this is the this is the criterion. <laughs> this is the criterion collection for for Kislovsky's uh, tree color blue. Um this one we're talking about. Mm, talking about blue yeah it's great i mean <clears throat> it's pretty expensive but it's a great film school i would say <laughs> it's, it's a great film school i mean i don't mind spending a few bucks for you know for good movies good cinema and also uh to go out on a tangent kislovsky made uh the decalogue also which is a very very um it's a great 10 piece 10 series mini series part film of the 10 commandments uh in contemporary times in the late 80s so set in poland so it's a very very good uh uh film to watch also if if, if you guys are interested in Chislovsky by any chance <laughs> Yeah, if you guys have made it till now, you're definitely interested in Kislovsky. <laughs> That's for sure. I and mean, no one would actually make it till now. Honestly, what it's half an hour. It's half an almost half an hour. I don't think anyone. Let's just let's just talk about the craft then. Let's talk about the craft. Yeah, yeah. You can't find the scene. No, the scene that you sent me is not the scene that I'm talking about. Actually, I'm referring to the one that's. Oh, in 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 the middle, in the middle. Yeah, yeah. In the middle when 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 they made love. Yes. They made love in the middle. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think it's. I don't think we can find that. Um. That's okay. Let's move on to the craft. So. I think we can move on to the craft of the film. Let's talk about those extreme close-ups that you mentioned a little bit before, and how he likes to use reflection. I think. I think. Yeah. One of. I've been studying uh, Kislovsky's uh, films uh, since a very long time. Um, 
I, I think Kislovsky is one of the directors that got me into cinema, actually. Got me into, like, uh, uh, inter, uh, like uh, so-called, inter, like, international cinema, like, European cinema. He got me into European cinema. And one of the earliest films I've seen was Three Colors uh, Blue, so, and then Red and then White. And I think one of Kislovsky's very uh, interesting, one of his... Um, not, not. I wouldn't say signature. Like one of his, uh, great, really well used, uh, uh, technique is the close up. Is the close up, is a very, very meditative close up. I think, and most of the time, is close ups not only on people but on objects. Extreme close ups. I would say not even close ups. Extreme close ups, on objects, on people. Uh, especially in blue, we can see um, there's this scene when she has the sugar cube, when she takes the sugar cube and she she soaks the sugar cube for a while, she drops it in. You know, who on earth, who on earth would would shoot that in nowadays? Who would see you dropping a sugar cube into into coffee, soak it before and then throw it in? I think that's a detail that nobody even gives a, a crap about. You know. But he focuses on things like this because at that point, we have to be in Julie's mindset. You know, every tiny little things like this matters for her. You know, because nothing else matters. She's very enclosed in her world. You know, she's, she takes the sugar cube, she soaks it, she put, dips it in, you know, you know. And then we are so enclosed into that, that space that she's in, the mindset that she's in. You know, and also the use of, of reflections, the eye, obviously. And then the spoon, when the spoon was on the, the, the bottle and then she just, the spoon was swinging up and down. And then we can see like the distorted reflection of Julie's face on the spoon. She's looking, you know, and then it cut. And, and the best thing is, it's not very long. Those close-ups are not very long. You know, they, they always serve a purpose. It's not a very, very long close-up, you know, for you to see, for you to... Be, no, the close-up itself has a meditative quality to it. You know, it, it, it serves its own purpose, even with, because you don't want to bore the audience. We don't want to see um, a close-up of, of, of a spoon for 20 seconds. We don't want that, you know. We don't want, that's not how it, it, it works, you know. And I think, you know, the way he focuses, he emphasizes on all these small details, and all these tiny, tiny little details that actually makes a difference. That actually makes a difference to the entire, entire film. Um, and he loves to use focus. He loves to play with focus. You know, I'm not. Maybe it's not him, but the DP, especially. Uh, it's Slav. Uh, what's the name of the DP for, for Blue? Um, yeah, it it's yeah, Slavomir Idziak. It's a Polish um, DP also very famous. Uh, did I think two decalogues, or I think one or two for Kislovsky in uh, in in the decalogue. He was DP also for decalogue, and he loved he loved to use uh that uh, focus, you know, putting things in focus, putting things out of focus, you know, sometimes intentionally, most intentionally. I mean, uh, I can't really remember an example. Oh yeah, there's one most prominent example is just. When the boy found finds the necklace of Julie, she ho he holds the necklace up. You can see the cross, and then it racks focus to to her face, you know. Uh, the yeah, the rack focus. Uh, I can't think anything on the top of my head, but uh, these are the things. And also movement, blocking movement, the way she walks, the way she has. A, a secondary action every time she does something, you know, or else she's thinking of something, you know. Um, the thing is so great with Kislovsky is that he can make a person thinking about something as a secondary action, you know. It's, it's, it's almost impossible, you know, because it, a lot of it also relies on the performance. You know, if you could, because when you're thinking of something, Sometimes you do something, you know, and sometimes you just don't do anything, you know. 
but he can make he, he always has a secondary action i think that's very important in, in 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 filmmaking also you have to have a secondary action whenever you're doing something because we're always doing things you're not doing one thing only and i think that's what he he weaves everything together very intricate you know and also one thing i want to discuss the tech, the technique the craft that he manages to sort of give birth to i would say because i have not seen a film that used this technique was the fade fade out and the fade in the fade to black and then the fade in again so there's one scene particularly i think you can search on youtube where julie is sitting down you know and then it fades and then we see the blue tint in the face and then it fades to black and then you hear the music by uh by yeah I can't pronounce the composer's name, but yeah, very great score from the film. Great, great score. Um, uh, and it fades to black, and then the music comes in. And then, and then it fades back in again. We see Julie again. You know, and that short, at that short moment, that tiny moment that it fades to black, and then it fades out again. It fades in again. It fades to not sorry, not fades out. It fades in again to 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 Julie. You know, and it's so well done. It's so well done. I mean, it, it puts you in. It puts you entirely in a head, in a space. You know, we see, we essentially we see what she feel. Okay, and I think that is uh, that is not easy. <laughs> that is not easy to. to what we are seeing in, is what she is feeling. You know, we don't see basic actions anymore. You know, we are we are seeing what she is feeling. He's moving the camera the way she is feeling. She is thinking. That's what is so effective about the film, I would say. He's a very poetic filmmaker, so I think you covered a lot of the different. Um, things that he does really well. Yeah, I think that's a lot to to talk yeah. about. Fuslovsky, I think it's it'll go on and on. I think. Um, cool. Which Is part, there anything else? Which part? Which part that strikes you the most? Which part do you remember the most? I mean, you haven't seen the film for for at least a few months, <laughs> no. But I, I'm just curious which part actually stood out to you the most, if you can, if you can think. Um, it was, I think you already touched upon two of the moments that really stand, stand out to me. One moment was the moment in the beginning where she tries to commit suicide and then um, the nurse comes. Yeah. And that moment that's created there between them is quite brilliant um and the performances in that moment and how real that felt and the other moment that really stands out is that love making scene in the middle of the film okay with juliet minosh and um the guy the other composer yeah. guy um, i also really like the way that music is integrated through the whole film the fact that um the husband was a composer automatically for me says that music is going to be important. And so when I watched it from the very beginning, I was thinking the music has to be very, a very integral part of this film. Yes. Yes. Not just the score that they're writing, but I, the actual sound that's used and the final music that plays at the end. Right. Um, and so I think he managed to pay that off quite impressively. Um, I do think that he uses a very poetic structure throughout all of the work that I've seen of his, which is the entire trilogy. I've also seen, you know, another film of his called a short film about killing. Oh yeah. 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 I have not. So seen that. that's a very, very different film, a much darker film, yes. um, but very, very successful film. And mm, I think, he really, yeah, he really knows how to um, pick and choose which moments he wants to emphasize. And I think in this film, 
um, the choice to use the color blue and how at the end, and then how the other colors only soak in, like seep in in the very end. Yeah. Why? Red and green, I think. Mostly red and green. Like yeah, I think there's just a little bit of red pokes in in that one scene, right? Red comes in a lot of times in the film, especially when uh, Charlotte's character, mm-hmm. uh, the, the prostitute, uh, appears and then in the club that they went the nightclub that they went it was all red um, green appears sometimes also as a tint uh, but blue mostly um, especially the the swimming pool especially the swimming pool the blue everything is so blue you know I mean, that's like a really interesting choice. And I think that's interesting that he set, it's kind of like a limitation, right? I mean, it's cool. as a cool effect if it works off, but it's like a limitation that he set for himself from the very beginning. Oh, this film's going to be majorly blue. Blue. It, it's a funny thing, actually. For the, for the scene, you know, in the swing pool, when everything is so blue, actually... Kislovsky initially wanted them, uh, wanted her to be jogging, jogging around. Uh, and then the DP is like, let's make her swim. A swimming pool and everything. It's a much more interesting frame. That's more interesting shot. So Kislovsky is like, yeah, okay, we'll try that. And then they did that and that's why they, they stuck with it. And I think this is one of the, the, the very, very uh, important crucial part about filmmaking especially is this collaboration you know uh, in a sense where you know a dp is a dp you know but he doesn't only take care of the lights and the camera and all that you know he has to he knows the story you know he goes with the story you know it's like oh why not we you know what serves the story better jogging is boring what if she swims you know like, w- w- what what would it look you know what would the frame look like what would the water look like? Everything is, he say, the, the DP is like, everything is dead below and everything on top is living. What, what, what would that be interesting? It's, it's like her. It's like her mindset and she's like between there, between the dead and the living. You know, she's trying to, you know, she's, it's, just, it's sort of something like that that goes through his mind and I think that's very important also. Um, especially when you're making films. Um, yeah. Cool. It's a good note to end it on. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching and for listening to <laughs> mostly Dr. Tan. <laughs> the... I don't know why. Satya is, uh, is sleeping in this, uh, in this review. Why no, I think you had a lot to say. I think you, you know Kislausli uh, better than I do. And... Um, You've seen the film multiple, multiple times. And so I think your insights uh, were were very good. And I think there was no reason to, to add on to it necessarily. And uh, if anybody's made it to this point in, they've got a good understanding of like what this film is. Yeah. And <laughs> should, if, if, they haven't, if you haven't seen it, you should still watch it. Yeah, you, should, you should watch it. Yeah. Get it on. I think either get it on Criterion or like get a free trial, watch it, and then cancel the yeah free trial or something. I don't know, but it's it's. I mean, if people usually ask me like, "Hey, uh, uh, what should I watch? What 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 you know?" Like film students, like, oh, what 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 should, uh, have you seen? Or what, what should I watch? Or something? Or they ask me for suggestions, or they be like, "Yeah, have you seen this or that?" I'll be like, "Have you seen uh, Three Colors Blue, Red, uh, the Three Colors trilogy?" You know. Uh, because I think that is the best stepping stone into into uh, European films. Um, I, I don't know. I don't want to use the word art house, you know, but European films, uh, especially um, or films like it's like like sort of like that, you know. Um, uh, yeah, I think I I want to ask you to watch, you know, uh, Tarkovsky, Bergman, you know, all those. People because it's very hard to absorb, especially if you're not used to it. So Kislovsky is a very, very good um, starting point if, if any of you are actually interested in trying to understand what uh, cinema back then is like, you know, or what, uh, um, yeah, or what cinema can do to you.
you know, or, or what cinema can really do. Right? So try watching Three Colors Trilogy and it will uh, open up your mind. I just realized that we're wearing blue today. Are you wearing blue? Uh, it's kind of like, like a gray, gray. Like a gray. Uh, I'm wearing blue. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah, but nice I, I, I think that's... Uh, what else do you want to add, add on? I don't know. Um, just you know the 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 three colors they end up overlapping, right? And they all kind of um. Oh yeah, colors. yeah, yeah. Like I think that's something. Overlapping. Maybe we can talk about more in uh following episodes. Yeah. If we continue to do the red and white. Yep. Yep. Uh, we actually see the characters overlap in the films, which is very interesting. Because Kislovsky shot three films, I think, in a span of one year, mm. two years or so. I think it was one year or two years or so. He shot the entire trilogy. He was, I think he was shooting blue and then he was editing red or he was shooting red or editing blue or, or, or shooting white and then editing red or something like this. It was, it was up and down, up and down. It was overlapping and he, he was, he was a beast. He's a beast. He's working consist, constantly. And that's why he died so early in 96 of a uh, heart failure because it was, it wasn't healthy. I mean, the way he was, he was working. Yeah, you know, people take four years or five years to sh- or three, four years to shoot a feature. You know, he shot three features in a span of what one, two years. <laughs> it's it's almost impossible. You know, you imagine how much effort, how much, you know, strength he has to put into it. It's, um, it's amazing. He's a very good filmmaker. Very impressive guy. Yeah, Shishtov uh, Kishnovsky. Check it out. Check it out. Um, yeah, Thanks. if you don't know how to spell his name, uh, just put Polish director or something. <laughs> he might be the first one to come out. Uh, or just pause in the beginning of the video because I spelled out on the book. Yes, we had the sign up in there. If any, so any, for those that stayed till the end or those that skipped to the end, <laughs> Thank you. We're for actually speaking. doing a secret <laughs> giveaway. <laughs> oh, from missing. Christoph Kielowski DVDs. Yeah, yeah, You're yeah. one of a few winners. <laughs> you made oh, it to the end. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, oh damn, I think I, I, I crashed or something. Did I... Oh yeah, it froze. Uh well, thank you for watching, everyone. Oh, no, my video camera is sort of like uh, screwed up. <laughs> what a way to end. <laughs> it's a good way to end. Yeah, yeah, a good way to end. Um, I guess, I don't know. <laughs> Thanks for watching. And catch us next time. Yes. Catch on next watch time. at your own risk. Watch at your own risk. Tata, see you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.